Okay, I'm John Furrier with SiliconAngle.com here inside theCUBE at VMworld. We have the cloud panel, and I'm going to go down and let you guys introduce yourselves and we'll jump right in. Go ahead, Scott. I'm Scott Jenneru, I'm CEO of Nervonix. I am Samir Delakia, uh, General Manager of the Cloud Platforms Group at Citrix. Hi, I'm Krishna Subramanian, I'm VP of Marketing for VDI in a Box at Citrix. So VMware has used the word end user computing, we'll start with you Krishna, uh, and changed it from virtualization, uh, desktop virtualization to end user computing. You guys had a lot of demos at Synergy, which we covered on siliconangle.tv. So talk about what's changing in, in the world there, and how do you guys compare to VMworld? Because everyone wants to know, you guys, you know, competitors, want to hear your story, you're here at VMworld, and uh, what's, your, what's your counterpoint to VMware? Sure, um, we are co-operators, we run on vSphere, so we work on the same hypervisor platforms, which is why we're here at VMworld. Yep. Uh, but I think we share the vision for end user computing. It's becoming anytime, anywhere, any device access for anyone. And that's where we fit in. We're making we're desktop virtualization very easy and very affordable for a company of any size to adopt it. So you guys are working closer with VMware now that Simon Crosby's gone? <laughs> I had to, get, had to get that in for the folks out there. No, Simon Crosby, they know he's a fierce competitor against VMware. But you, know, but you guys have to cooperate. And just like in the old days, you know, with, in, in, in the PC business, uh, we heard Pat Gelsinger talking about the ecosystem. Um, what's the biggest reality right now in cloud? We, we talked to practitioners yesterday and said less than 30% of IT CIOs and IT practitioners are moving to the cloud with any kind of tier two or tier one which I find astonishing. What do you guys think about that statistic and what's your, your take on that? Well, I think there's, there's no question that's going to take some time for, for enterprises in particular to move towards cloud infrastructure uh, in, a public set, in a public fashion, uh, but it's also going to be a requirement of our cloud service providers to mature the infrastructure and, and create specialized offerings. We'll have different kinds of clouds that are tailored for this kind of compliance or that kind of regulation or this HIPAA cloud and those types of things, I think we'll see more and more of those tier one apps and tier two apps get moved out to the cloud. Uh, but there's no question that we'll, we'll also see a lot of uh, enterprises building on premise clouds that look like the largest clouds in the world. And that's really what, what Citrix is out to provide. Uh, describe the groundswell right now in your mind on how the cloud uh, momentum is. Is it really happening and do you see, and what kind of specific things can you point to that say this is coming? Because we're seeing a lot of movement faster than, quite frankly, open source can handle. So open source is growing, yep. but the movement for commercial grade cloud is really real. So can you point to that, talk about that dynamic? Yeah, we, we see uh, an incredible amount of uh, traction right now with folks. I mean, the, the single uh, most obvious data point is Amazon Web Services growth. I mean, they are on path to be a billion dollar company uh, based on just what they're doing with infrastructure as a service cloud. Uh, and, and there are a slew of organizations right behind them building cloud infrastructure and, and to bringing those to enterprise customers uh, that are interested in it, and ranging from enterprise all the way to small, medium business. Um, what we've seen at Citrix uh, via our acquisition at cloud.com uh, that the interest is broad from uh, multiple classes of customers, so certainly large service providers who now recognize that they need to build clouds like Amazon. Uh, so some of our customers are folks like Korea Telecom or GoDaddy, people that realize they're now a competitive threat to Amazon, I got to go build a cloud that is like the largest clouds in the world. Um, their customers, you got um, the next gen enterprises, so Zynga, Netflix. The, the Built on Amazon? Zynga was built on Amazon. Zynga had been, and, and, and continues to run a big part of it, but they've also built ZCloud internally as a private cloud that is built on the cloud.com technology base and Zen server at the bottom um, that basically emulates that same scale of cloud. It's just behind their firewall, and they, because they're using uh, our technology, they can flex between the two. Scott, you guys have a cloud, and you're up and running with a lot of customers on the store side, and you guys, uh, by the way, offered uh, assistance to Hurricane Irene folks to move all their data over and did it for Japan. That was a good call, I like that, good marketing. Uh, but you guys are up and, up and running, fast growing startup. You guys are moving fast. What's the demand that you're seeing on cloud? In particular, what are the key requirements that you're hearing from customers? Yeah, so that, that, that's a good question. So I spend about 75% of my time in front of customers and prospects. So I'm out and about all the time. And I will tell you that I think right now the interest in cloud, and specifically our story, is getting a huge amount of traction. You know, quarter on quarter, we're in triple digit growth. 
Um, you know, these are people who are putting production, real data in the cloud. I have many customers who have petabytes in our cloud. I have many customers that have 100 terabytes in the cloud. And what's really resonating, I think, that people forget when they start talking about you know, OpenStack and some of these other areas, is the fact that we have something that we call hybrid cloud. Customers don't want isolated islands of cloud. And so one of the things that I think is really important for what we do is, we put, when we put something on a customer's floor in a hybrid type node, they also have access to our public cloud. So they can actually buy some private, you know, hybrid type stuff that's more secure in their location, and it also allows them to move that data anywhere around the world. And it gives them such a flexibility when there's a regional disaster like you just mentioned, if for DR, for business continuity. Um, you know, I was talking to a customer yesterday, and we were talking about Veeam, a company over here that does snaps for virtual machines. We snap Veeam into our cloud, and then if there's a disaster in that data center, they can download that image anywhere in the world on an open box and be up and running quickly. That's the, that's the power of the cloud, but you need both. It's not just public by itself, and it's not creating private. Private in your own world by yourself doesn't give you the same flexibility that you get with a, this cloud federation that we call between hybrid and public using both together. Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, you know, there'll be all three, but I want to ask Samir and you a question about, uh, you mentioned Amazon. Um, Amazon's on the public cloud. What we're hearing, what we're seeing is that people want real products right, right now. The demand for like delivery is so high that uh, things like OpenStack and other open source initiatives that have a lot of momentum and a lot of uh, movement and hype behind them that people are getting involved in. You guys are involved in OpenStack, for example. HP jumped in. The question is, is that going to grow fast enough than the demand for the real products and services? So it brings the question of, hey, if I can deliver a hybrid cloud like a Z cloud, like Zynga, that's a much faster solution and can OpenStax, the community, the bottoms up, move fast enough? So can you guys talk about that? Yeah, I'll take a quick cut uh, from, from Citrix perspective. It's one of the reasons we acquired cloud.com was speed to market with real technology in market today. They've got 65 production clouds that have been built on their technology platform, including Zynga, which by the way is now at 10,000 servers, 10,000 nodes deployed on the cloud stack technology. So it, for anybody who's looking for a real technology they can get started with today, that product is there and Citrix is happy to come partner with you on it. Um, we do obviously believe uh, very deeply in OpenStack and the open source community as well. Uh, and, and our belief, working. Belief and delivery are two things, right? And our, we have uh, dozens of engineers lined up to help accelerate it, and we're working uh, as quickly as we can, and we're not alone in it. Obviously, uh, Dell and HP and Cisco and Intel, there are a number of very large organizations who are getting behind it. And you're right, speed matters, um, and what we're doing is taking our uh, cloud.com technology with the rest of the Citrix portfolio, Zen Server, Netscalers uh, to do load balancing and firewalling and bridging between that hybrid model. Our networking technology is a key part of the story that Citrix uniquely delivers. Um, we're, we're bringing all that to folks today and allowing them to seamlessly bridge over to an OpenStack world as that as that matures and gets ready. All right, Scott, go ahead, real quick. Well, get to yeah, so, you know, we feel OpenStack is still very immature. When you talk about saying you've got a dozen of customers, I have, I have 1,200 customers that are you know, doing something really radically different. Just, I mean, I'll give you an example. Just the mere fact right now in an open source environment to upload data, it has to be in five gig chunks. Five gig chunks don't work for a customer that has multiple petabytes in the cloud. It might be great for an SMB type customer, for a small customer, but that's the immaturity still of this product. We're on our second generation of technology. We've been doing this for years. But I do want to stress one thing that's important. There's OpenStack for server you know, type cloud and there's OpenStack for storage. So with the stuff I'm referring to is around storage. I personally think for storage, when you look at what's out there today, there's very few customers that are using OpenStack in a storage cloud environment. There's a, quite a few that are using it for more of a server type environment and it seems to be working better in that environment. I think that that's a little more mature. But for the cloud storage side, I don't think anybody can show me a customer that has petabytes of storage using an open store file, OpenStack file system today. Maybe one, but not a lot, and nowhere close. So, and there's a lot of issues around it, you know, around performance, around objects not synchronized, around data consistency. None of that today is built in there. The other thing too, as we all know, and I, I go back to my storage background, you know, NetApp's a great company as a storage company, but what makes NetApp a great company, to be fair, is the fact that they have software integration 
and they've done that so well. It's not the actual hardware piece, right? There is a lot of software integration, BD type work that you're going to have to do with OpenStack that isn't there today. Today we're integrated with Commvault. Today we're integrated with NetBackup. We're integrated with these companies. It's taken us years to do this. It's so just because you have a product and say it can kind of do this, that doesn't mean that it's production ready to do what customers really want to do with production data. So there's a lot of work to it. I'm yeah, not saying it might not get there, no, no, but I, I, a, I question it I mean, it a I love more. OpenStack, but I think there's a transformation. This is a bigger conversation. We could do a whole data center and storage panel on this one topic. So to me, it's a transformation going on, and uh, it's, it's interesting. I'm watching it closely. Yeah, no, and I, I, I think that, uh, uh, I think the, the comments are, are, are fair. I think, you know, the, obviously the OpenStack community would probably have a slightly different view of where Swift is. Uh, but I, I think you're right that there's, there are enterprise use cases and there's object storage in the S3-like fashion. And those, you know, those may be, those may be different I'd use cases. I'd love to get you guys on a panel together. So Christian, let's get that on because you've been uh, quiet. End user computing, obviously virtualization affects the user experience. Um, you guys trumpet out the iPad at Synergy. Um, that changes the CIO. Hey, build this. I want this. And that, that's a different use. So what are the highlights of the things that you're seeing in the end user, top of the stack? Obviously VMware has got social cast and they're going to be very mobile with the apps and data. So what, share with us some data. Absolutely, and you know, Citrix has been a leader in the mobile and anytime, anywhere 